guys, so welcome back to yet another episode of the I'm Down Podcast. My guys are super dirty, look at that. They're super yeah. scratched. You know what's crazy? I'm not like with this light though. And I'm pretty sure they can see too. All the dust that flies. Yeah, the particles. Like a motherfucker. That's like nothing. I know with this light and then when I look at the mirror, I realize God took his time on me. Wait, what? Yeah, like God took his time, you know. And Michael Day made in his image. My guy. But I feel like like he really takes special time with, with that haircut. Because right of now. humility, humility. With that haircut right now. Jesus got a lot of hair, don't judge me. Jesus got a lot of hair. He had no tape. And he saved the world. You think I need tape to save the Cause world? Because tape wasn't it back then, you know? That wasn't like a thing. Well, I don't want to conform to the ways of this world with a fade. So, I'm going to get a full shoulder length hair. For what? Let me see what I got That's fashion. You got, you got some, some, some pocket? Let me see. I do. I do. Actually, I do want to talk about something real quick. <laughs> like, your, your eyes just glistened. You were like, all right, I, I know what it is. Nah, all right. So last last, uh, <laughs> last podcast, right, we left on talking about um, certain people just like, or not certain people, just people in general kind of chasing their, chasing money mm-hmm. over t- dreams, you know, like careers, you know, what career pays this and that, whatever, right? I just posted that up today too, right? Like as one of our clips, which is kind of the same thing, right? So one of the things that is, I guess, taboo to talk about and you're probably the perfect person to talk about it with, is sex and money, right? Now, like what do you mean that, sex and money? Like, getting money through sex? No, no, like... <laughs> like a higher... No, dude, no, or? not like a prostitute, not prostitute. I'm talking about just in general, the higher topic... Worker. Okay, higher work, higher sex worker. Yeah. Is the topic of sex and the topic of money. Like, for example, like a lot of families, they don't address ever the address those two topics. Mm-hmm. And the reason I say you is because you're so always like, like the super like, yo, don't talk to me about non-sexual, you know, whatever, right? Yeah. But that was, I, I get. So what are your thoughts on that? <laughs> let's get you talking about <laughs> it. You don't like talking about it, so let's get you talking <laughs> about it. That's what you just throw it in there. Yeah. Nah, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I think conservative families, right? Like, my family is very conservative. You guys haven't caught on by the time that we always talk about here. And your family is very conservative too. Yeah. I think it's kind of like a underlying discomfort, mm-hmm. but also assumption that we know. Right. Like, you ever like, like, I think your dad looks at you and my dad looks at me, he's like, ah, they know, like, yeah, they yeah. Know. And right. you know. And, and I grew up in church. So in church, it was weird because uh, you grew up with like, Basically, essentially what you're hearing is sex is bad, sex is bad, sex is bad. Right. Once you got a ring, sex is good. Right. Essentially. <laughs> the, yeah. the problem with that teaching is that sex is good all the time. <laughs> yeah. Literally. The, exactly. the, now, the moral... So when it's bad, it's like, <laughs> it's still good. The, the moral of sex, <laughs> that is the issue. You know? Right. And so we need to clarify that because I grew up and it's like... To this day, I find I'm very uncomfortable discussing sexual topics, discussing even kissing. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, like that's how... I discover. I feel like it should be like per intimate to me. You know, you're on the other spectrum. Like, yeah, we should talk about this. Like, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. And not like in a perverted way. That's not what we're referring to. But just the conversation of of yo, it's a normal thing. Everybody's yeah. doing it. Like, just I don't, I don't, I don't feel comfortable with that topic. And it's because of that. It's because in my family, like you know, we really didn't discuss it. Also, uh, the financial stability stuff and education. You know, my parents always wanted the best for us. That was a given. Mm-hmm. But. They didn't have the vocabulary or I think the, the full knowledge of truly educating somebody financially. Mm-hmm. You get me? Like they gave me the, and to this day they still give me the opportunity to be better than they were because they sacrificed everything they have to leverage it for our future. Right. But they don't, and, and other, every other way they've encouraged me and verbally taught me, you know, you address people a certain way, you act a certain way, you speak a certain you eat a certain way. Like everything else that they had, they passed it on verbally and also by example. But I, I think that in sex and in money, those are the two things my parents did not verbally pass down. Yeah. Because they also did not have that education. Mm. Where they can be like, hey, you know, let's talk about a, a condom or let's talk about whatever. Yeah. Because it was assumed that uh, we would always have sex when we're married. So I don't even think right. they think about... Uh, about uh, <laughs> like premarital, you know, like yes, Protection. Yeah. Like it's not needed. You get me? Like yeah. you don't need to have a condom. Well, you're married. Go have sex. Right, like, right, I think right. that I think that is the assumption. Yeah, yeah. That that's why we don't talk about you know condoms or or that that transplant thing which I heard oh, um, yeah, last, last time was wild. Yeah, yeah. You know like and the same thing with money is like we, I didn't think about an IRA a Roth I didn't think about investing I didn't think yeah. about stock market like that's the thing that you see in movies uh-huh. and it sounds cool yeah and you see like the dude in the the full suits but it does the it's not street. yeah but it's not like something that that seemed like attainable to me at least when I was younger yeah because it seemed like it was like a profession not like a, oh yeah I can also find somebody who can do it for me or yeah. like if somebody does it for me I need to have a lot of money 
Yeah. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? And I, and I think all of that, I think that the underlying problem with that has been verbal communication. Sometimes we assumed it was implied. Uh-huh. Like my parents assumed I I understood sex, which obviously we all do at this age. Right. But, um, you know, they didn't verbally say, hey, like, these are the limits, the parameters, the whatever of it. Right. Yeah, I mean, but, you know, because I, I think that our parents, I wouldn't say necessarily grew up in a different environment of conversation. Mm-hmm. I think that, you know, like, every young kid, even, like, you know, in their country, Honduras, I'm sure, like, the teenagers there were talking about mm-hmm. sex yeah. and, you know, all this all this stuff, you know. And it was like, you know, and they speak they speak on the very immaturely, in a very mm-hmm. mature way or a braggadocious yeah. way or whatever. So, you know, like, us here... You know, when you're when you're growing up, you don't. First of all, those conversations seem to be awkward, mm-hmm. right? They're deemed awkward, anyways. Yeah. You get me? So like, I mean, and, and when it revolves around sex, I'm not just talking about just like the physical part of mm-hmm. you know, they're just in a yeah. point. I'm talking about just just in general, like the you intimacy know, of it, right? Like, and, and, and even like on a relationship level, like I've never had the conversation of, of a girlfriend, uh, uh, like how should I treat a girl? None of that stuff. You get me? Like I, I, it's always been um, like like I guess like you say, led by example. You get me? So I'm just mm-hmm. seeing my dad. And my mom be, you know yeah. I mean, and whatever like I'm seeing from them, that's how I'm thinking it, mm-hmm. it goes through, you know what I mean, and it just it, it just keeps going on, on both ends, you get know I me? Mean? So like to kind of jump on the money part, I I think you're right. I think for the money part though, our parents are, or at least my parents are just now learning mm-hmm. a little yeah, bit more, exactly, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So like they're almost getting educated at the same time that we're getting educated, you know what I mean? Because I think that is such a like prevalent topic now, like within the youth, you get know I me? Mean? Mm-hmm. Like I, I think that like maybe like a few years ago it wasn't too big, you know what I mean? Like people weren't really talking yeah. about that. And now you have like, you know, rappers talk about investments and real estate and stuff. Financial stability. Exactly. You know, you start to kind of get into it a little bit more. You know what I mean? So like the same thing you're saying, like, so 401k and all those things, like, I mean, we have the internet now where, you know, you can literally sit down and learn everything there is to know about a Roth, a 401k without ever going to business school. For dummies, exactly. Exactly. You don't need a washi guy Mm -hmm. to like, you know, help. You know what I'm saying? You could, um, you know, like back then for you to like to buy a stock, you have to call a brokerage, uh, you know. Tell them, hey, look, mm-hmm. I want to buy X, um, X amount. And, and, and you need to know what you're ordering. Because exactly. it's literally ordering. Exactly. Or if now you had a guy yeah. call you, hey, look, you should buy this. You know, now it's like, yo, you have the the app Robinhood on your phone. Open that yeah. up and you can buy it for free. You know, mm-hmm. you don't even have to pay brokerage for you though. You know, so it's definitely a, a big uh, a change. You know what I mean? Uh, when it comes to like that financial stuff. Because like for me growing up, like the minute I got a job, I remember my mom would be like, oh, save money, save money. But like... I, for what? Yeah, you know I mean, for me, it was like save money for what? Yeah, you know I mean, like, like what am I, what am I yeah. saving for? You know? and, and and like the whole savings account, you know, like realistically, now we know that you shouldn't, you don't need that much money in your savings account. Right. Yeah, you don't need to have a bunch of money. But but, but that's why our parents men, our parents men, like have that money in the savings account. No. Yeah. The idea is you gotta. How can I keep this money growing? Exactly. Exactly. So and that's a perfect point. You know, right now you might you you, you might hear that a lot, right? Like everybody, I realized like. And especially when it comes to money, it's not nobody's really focused on having money. If you really think about it, right? Everybody thinks they want money. Like you know, the people mm-hmm. that you hear like, oh, I get money, but then they're popping bottles at the clubs and buying expensive clothes all the time. You know, if you really pay attention, those people really aren't about money. They're about the things money gets. Yeah. You get me? Like when I talk about money, I'm talking about just what you said. You know, where do you allocate that money into assets that mm-hmm. continue to grow over time? You know what I mean? Like, cause again, like when, when we were when we go ahead and talk about money, it should be on the topic of how do we grow this so we could build wealth and the reason for building wealth is not so I could buy a Ferrari or a private right. plane is so that I have freedom or my family mm-hmm. has a freedom to kind of do the things that are important because you know I remember I was having this conversation with my friend um, like a couple months ago right I was telling him that you know for for poor people the reason why I feel like a lot of poor people or unwealthy people or middle class people or whatever were held back a lot in life is because we almost don't have time to focus on like let's say like like mental health right such mm-hmm. a big thing right uh besides all the drugs and stuff but like like just mental health itself we don't have time to really work on that because you're too distracted yes. like you have to pay this i have to pay that how can i get more money how can i get more money you're so left behind mm-hmm. that you just you're just in a rat race to get money mm-hmm. but to never really like build up your mental health mm-hmm. your emotional health you just make it to paycheck I- exactly you know what I mean? and you're so left behind always like you know you're not necessarily thinking about okay well now that I have wealth, you know what I mean? I have the freedom to kind of do the things that do matter, you know, things that impact humanity, mm-hmm. the things that, that mean something, you know what I mean? The things that mean something to you, you yeah. know what I mean? If you like adventure, you'll go and do that. If you want to uh, volunteer in, I don't know, Honduras, you can do that, you know what I mean? Like, but without that financial, and I don't want to say st- financial stability, you need you, you need an abundance mm-hmm. of financials, you know what I mean? To allow you to do yeah, those kind of things. Multiple you, incomes. You, you will never get there, you know what I mean? So, so that's what I mean when I talk about, you know, multiple streams of income and stuff because... If you don't have that, 
then if you only have one job and this job is what's paying all your bills, if you lose that job or you can't take off of that job, you're, you're, you're going to be there yeah, forever. You get me? Yeah. So yeah, so the goal is to always look at, again, what can you do? What can mm-hmm. you venture off into? You know? And even um, like understanding how, how things work. Uh, there's this like, for, for example, Hispanic people, especially with, like you said yourself, we're working so hard. We don't even take vacation. We don't take none of that yeah. because it seems unattainable. Uh-huh. But like people need to understand like you can, first of all, you can budget. Second of all, you can plan yeah. accordingly. Yeah. Like, you don't have to pay a whole vacation this paycheck. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's the other thing I find is, like, a lot of times we don't get True. to enjoy stuff because we don't know how to properly allocate costs, too. Uh-huh. Like, you know, one thing is allocating, like, you know, towards the interest and the gains of that, but also allocating costs. Like, can I split some things? Can I divide some things? Can I shift some things around? Yeah. Right? Uh, like, you know, and when you start looking at that, like, because you, you know how your budget works, you know how your finance works, uh-huh. then you can start saying, you know what, maybe... This month we'll have a, an excess. We can use it towards a vacation because we, we're prominent and obviously be smart with your money, but also enjoy what you got. Yeah. Not like voila. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I don't, I, that's not what I'm saying. Don't mm-hmm. don't enjoy beyond what you got. Right. But enjoy what you got because at the end it's a fruit of your labor. Mm-hmm. Like you know, if you don't enjoy it, somebody else will who yeah. didn't pay for it. Yeah. No. You so absolutely, you absolutely so I, I think that's another thing is um, you know like I talked to my parents and said, for them it's like they're like yo we're, we're so happy you get to vacation. But it seems still, like, even so now, it still feels like it seems far from them. Like, yeah. like it's not something possible. I was talking to a friend who, who just spent, like, three months in Spain. Mm-hmm. Wow. No, not three months. Two, three weeks. <laughs> three months. About the same. Three, three, three of... weeks, four weeks, like that. <laughs> and, and they were like, oh, you know, you know what I did is I started paying this little by little, little by little. By the time he came, I just needed the money that I was using the trip. Yeah. And I was like, see? Like, when you take it like that, it's better than saying, I got to pay $1,000 just to fly, whatever. And, and yeah. that kind of thing also is like, you know, you got to be practical, chop at it. Just like you chop at your debt, you, mm-hmm. know, you can't just expect to have one, you know, this big chunk of uh, like, just Yeah, right. You right. got to chop at everything. And it's, it's practical. Yeah. Because right? a lot of times it just right. feels so distant to us. And, and you said around me, we, we've done that with vacations. It's, it's usually like, you, you'll be tracking the flights, you'll be, tr- like, so usually we know what's kind of set up yeah. and what's not, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And like, I, I guess on, on that topic, like, you kind of know what's said and what's not said, you know what I mean? Like, so it's variables that, mm-hmm. you know, you kind of see, know, yeah. Exactly, so... I, you're absolutely right, like, you know, but that, that's just it, though, like, you know, at, at this point, though, in time, like, it, it, even even the, the the topic of, like, how much you make is, like, such a big thing. I remember mm-hmm. when I was in, um, so, like, d- during my internship, right, you know, I had, like, a pre-training yeah. or whatever. I remember during that time, they're like, oh, you know, you never ask somebody how much they make, like, you never ask that question, it's, like, very personal, is this and that. But I don't understand, I, to this, I still don't understand why it's a personal thing, to keep like your income to yourself or like not share your income. I, I like I like I guess I work I can understand because like for example, let's say me and you do the exact same job, right? But you get paid more. And I get paid more. Yeah. You might be like, yo, I don't understand, mm-hmm. you know, maybe I was there longer or I don't, whatever, you know, for whatever the reason. Qualified be. or whatever. Right, like yeah. whatever the reason may be, but but I, to this day, I still don't get, like, the whole, between, like, oh, no, you don't ask that question, yeah. you know, that's, like... Well, to be um, honest, that, that's part of how I was raised. I, I don't ask those questions. Yeah. No, but, right, but that's what I'm saying, like, you know, so, so like, for me, like, I, I was never told not to ask that in my house. Like, oh, like, cause I, I never even asked my parents how much they made. I will hear it, like, in the grapevine. Mm-hmm. So, for me, like, for example, like, all right, so my dad, um, at, at least in my more, like, I guess, older phase of life, I, my dad was paying the majority of the bills, mm-hmm. right? As when I was much younger, I can't really remember which my mom was. You know what I mean? I didn't know the switch mm-hmm. because I wasn't uh, aware, right? When I started being aware, it's like, oh, you know, and I know, I understand my dad pays most of it, but I know how much my dad makes. So I'm thinking, okay, so this guy is over here making X amount of money, taking care of four four people himself and three more yeah. people in the house. I'm like, damn, so if I make that much money, then good. I'm good. Because if I live alone... <laughs> exactly. So that's what, I, that's what I always thought in my head. I mean, I'm thinking like, oh, okay, I'll be good. But <clears throat> the, the thing is that, though, like, you don't really realize it, but like, like you said one important thing when your parents, like, yo, the sacrifice that they went through is true. Like, I'm sure my parents had to go through debt, you know what I mean, to like afford a lot of things that we have. Mm-hmm. The, the, was the debt allocated to? I have no clue. You know what I, mean? I have no idea. I never asked that either because I, I kind of find it pointless at this point. But it's so true, though, like, like those those things that that seem taboo, I just don't understand why they're taboo. Like, so, like let me ask you: Do you think that you think about why you do certain things, or you just like, okay, this is how I was learned, so you don't even like question it anymore? Nah, I do. Mm-hmm. Um, I I refuse. One thing that I hate the most, like one of the sayings I hate the most, is that's what's always been done. Right. I I'm a, I've been like I've been annoyed since I was little. Heard that. Before. Since I was little, I've always asked why. Uh huh. 
So like I remember even in church I used to get in trouble when I was little. Yeah. Cause it'd be like, you know, this is this, but why? Like, that's how we do it. But like, who is the end all, be all that uh-huh. tells me that's like, like you know, at work people have a certain way of doing things, but I'm like, yo, that's not efficient. But that's always always done it. But why? Like, you know, let's challenge to not like set the norm. So I always ask these questions. Sometimes I just find an answer that makes sense to me, and then I'll be like, you know what? Let's keep doing it that way. Gotcha. Like for example, the whole sex talk for me is like. Um, I would change the way I was talked about because uh, I would say, you know what, it's gonna feel good no matter what. Yeah. It's just that it doesn't have good repercussions or good consequences. Right. But other than that, I would, I would probably be like, I understand. I don't even feel comfortable talking about it. You yeah. know, like uh, the money talk. I would say, you know, you you can give to others what you got. Mm-hmm. Like you know, impart that knowledge that doesn't make you like like oh they're gonna beat me. No, it's not. Mm-hmm. It's, knowledge for others is is gain for you too. You know, it's an empowerment. Right. right? So empower people. But other than that, I would have to just say, like, yeah, it's so easy to just be like, yo, it's always been done. Like, it's always been that way. Uh-huh. Especially when, when you've seen it in your house that produces good fruit. Like, yeah. it's not like my parents had bad lives, bad economy, bad jobs or whatever. Yeah. So it's not like I would come and be like, something's not working here. Yeah. Thankfully, by the grace of God and by their sacrifice, everything has worked out. Right, right. So that's why I guess part of us, sometimes we don't challenge the norm. Right. It's because yeah. things seem to be working. I mean, did you ever feel poor growing up? Not really, yeah. But like it was a shift because when Honduras we had like a clean lady, we had all this stuff. I didn't learn to broom till I was like eleven gotcha, when I gotcha. moved here. Gotcha, then so. here, like it was like an adjustment period because we lived in an apartment uh, for when, like a first right, and it was all of us in an apartment. Yeah. And then little by little, like you know, my parents got better jobs again because it was like an adjustment. My parents, that, my parents bought to have good jobs in Honduras, like really good jobs, yeah. right? So. Went to private school, all that good stuff. Uh-huh. Then you come here, and it's like, you know, you got to start from zero again. Yeah. Right? Uh, and all that. And then, like, you know, we used to take the train every day because there was no car at that point. Yeah. And little by little, you know, like, we've grown up again. You know, they got better opportunities. We're getting our own income now. Uh-huh. But, uh, yeah, there was times that I was like, you know, I want that. But at the same time, I never felt poor because my parents really did sacrifice themselves. So, like, the Jordans, we always had the Jordans. We right, always right. had, like, the things that we wanted, not everything we wanted, uh-huh. But the things that we wanted, you know, you that got. we we got. Uh-huh. So I was never really lacking. You yeah, know? yeah. Cause you know, it's it's funny because I didn't even know about that until like, but maybe like eleven, twelfth grade. I remember like, uh, we're all like uh, sitting around, and everybody's like, "Yo, my parents make this, my parents make that." I'm like, "Oh, we make good money, right?" Like we're talking about. I, I didn't challenge. I was like, "We make good money." And the guy's like, "George, you live in the townhouse." I'm like. All right. I'm like, I think when I, I thought we were good. Yeah. I never ever saw it. Like, I mean, like, look, when I growing up, it was, I never, the Jordan stuff like that, yo, I had to hustle since I was young yeah. because I knew I was going to get Jordans from my mom. But it wasn't because, like, oh, they can't afford it. I used to always just think, like, oh, it was just a, a discipline yeah. thing. Because, for example, times I ask my mom, yo, mom, can I go out with a friend? Nope. No. Why? Because I said no. Yeah. So it's like, uh, okay, like, yeah, you know I mean, like, and no matter how much I nag yeah. and nag and nag, at one point I'd be like, no, you're not going out, that's it, shut you up. It, yeah. So it's like, all right, like, you get me? So for me, I never looked at it like, oh. Like, I'm, okay. I don't have the resources for it. Right, until you get a little older, you start to realize, oh, shit, okay, so like, this is what middle class looks like. Because, you know, like, for we talked about it last time, right? Like, you know, somebody making six figures, right? Like, in the hood, you're rich. Realistically, like, in America, you're middle class, right? And middle class in America is like the like like the worst in in, in cases. When I say worst, is because this rich have like you know Plenty. they keep getting richer and you know they uh, evade taxes yeah. and you know whatever. Poor people Get are help. getting help from government yeah. like crazy. Yeah. Middle class is like yo, we're you're, you're, you're too rich to be poor. You're too poor to be rich. Exactly. Yeah, you know I mean, and, and technically speaking, you're the one getting sucked out for everything. Mm-hmm. Anyways, like you're all, you're yeah. you're paying your taxes like everybody like everybody else. But right? you can't get a tax break. Exactly, and then. All those taxes that you're paying are going to those people. In yeah, you get me? Yeah. So it's like it's like one of those help. exactly one of those tricky things. But again, it's something I didn't look at or think about until I got older. I started realizing, oh, this is what you know yeah. what I mean. This and, is and, what. And this and the other thing is like, like the whole word "poor" or whatever. It's like it's so relative. It is because yeah. a, a household making forty k is middle class. Mm-hmm. In America, for real? Yeah. No, it's not. Yeah. Is it middle class six figures? No. Middle class six nah. figures? Six <laughs> figures is 1%, bro. Hey. You, you push nah, it. Nah, well, well, the, the top 1% of America, bro, is like at 300,000. Uh, 400,000. But look, I'm, I'm trying to, trying to tell 40, you. 40 to 120K is, is like middle class, bro. Really? Yeah. Like, at like 30... I'm not going to hear this like, fact check you. Sorry. Yeah, right, right. 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 Right
Like, after that, it's like, yo, this person's middle class. Which, you know, we were talking about it last week, and that's nothing. Look at like, a middle class income bracket. Maybe it's adjusted based on inflation, but it's, it's around 40K. I'll put 2019. Oh, you're not lying. Yeah. Pew defines the middle class as those earning between two thirds and double the medium household income. Those making less than thirty nine thousand five hundred make up the lower income bracket, while those making more than one hundred eighteen make up the upper. What income did bracket. I just say? Forty to hundred twenty. Yeah, that's just, <laughs> so. If you're wait, if you're in a household making forty, wait. So if you're in a household making about forty k. Forty to one hundred. Now, let's say forty to one hundred fifteen. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what are you saying? You're considered middle class. Middle class. So if you're over those numbers, so, you're so, either the upper class or you're or, or you're poor, right? Like actually poor. Middle class is not considered poor. It's called the working class, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's um, crazy. Which is is that a great disparity? Because talking about that's a huge difference from making forty to making almost one hundred twenty k. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, you still yeah. consider part of the same struggling yeah, class. Yeah. Insane. But, but yeah. So and that's how household income. That's household. That means everybody. That, has so I mean, that means well, like it really means isn't household though meaning husband and wife, yeah, right? Like yeah, yeah. essentially. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, uh, but we that, all that's BS. The combined, yeah, the combined income is the two, the two, the two independent people's. people, independent people. Okay. Right, based on tax, right, independent. Got you, got you. Um, but oh, wow. even so, like my, the point being is, you can be poor and not be poor. Got you, got you. To, <laughs> because to the, because like forty k, like forty k, it would be like you're not poor. Right, but yo, that's yeah. not enough with that way things are right now. Forty k, you living with poor people. Yeah. <laughs> that's for damn sure. You definitely living. You go definitely be in the hood for sure. Yeah. And so like that's the whole idea. The whole idea is like you know, we weren't educated to think bigger. Right, right. Yeah, I mean no, look, you you're absolutely right. But you know, again, I, I think that financial part has to, just comes with um, with with with, with what, what what we just said though, like with with the lack of education from both sides. I mean, like you know, my mom. And my dad are just now getting more and more mm-hmm. educated on you get me their thing, but like you know, I, I remember today so like kind of to shift gears to the to the sex part, right? So I'm walking to uh, I'm walking around right like a, a, every day at my job like around ten and twelve I try to walk around was like the least hottest I mm-hmm. guess. I remember, uh, twelve is pretty hot, but you know like but to get a stretch. before yeah, and especially because it's been pounding rain, right? So I'm like you know before so I was like pouring pouring. So I'm walking around, so I think you know, a lot of people right. So the people so let's say you're a boy right. And you're raised without your father. You kind of cling on to your mom. You become, uh, I don't, I guess, a mama's boy mm-hmm. as you grow up, right? But you know, when when you're, you know, you kind of lack the knowledge of a man, right? Like learning how to be mm-hmm. a man. Mm-hmm. So what you learn is a lot about what women need, and women you kind of like. right, and you almost have you build up this like reliance, reliability on women. You get me? So I feel like as as you get older, you decide to go into a relationship. It's almost easier for you to kind of handle a woman because you've dealt with one your whole life, right? In a in, in a sense, right? And maybe I might be lacking some characteristics, but you almost feel inclined to be with a woman because that's like what nurtured you in, in a sense. Right? But then I guess like if it's the opposite, right? If you're a boy who wasn't raised with his mom, man, right? you raised with your dad, depending on the kind of man that your dad is, the characteristics that you're gonna kinda of pick mm-hmm. up, right? But you're most likely going to cling on to the man, regardless. You know what I mean? To the very manly yeah. thing. Again, depending on your dad's characteristics. And then if you're someone who's in a household born with both parents, that's kind of the example you have. Like, okay, so if my mom and dad are, like, coddled and they... Whatever it is that they mm-hmm. do, that's what you feel like. You get me? You you will do. So I was thinking about myself. I was like, okay, well, you know, I told this story a million times. I've never seen my parents after all this freaking mm-hmm. time they've been married. I have no idea. They've been married for decades. Um, I've never seen them kiss. I've never mm-hmm. seen them hug. Nothing, right? So, you know, I'm always saying, oh, I can never have a girlfriend because I just don't know how to treat girls. You get me? I don't know how to treat girls. I don't know how to do all of that stuff. But then, you know, the more I start to think about me, I start to analyze my life, start to analyze my mind. Um, you know, like, I don't have no therapist. I don't got that kind of money, right? I could kind of get to kind of check, okay, well, maybe that's probably why. You get know I me? Mean? Because for me, you know, like, you see, like, we'll go out or we'll do whatever. I don't care, right? If it has to come, if it's come time to pay for something or take something to, like, take us some type of responsibility, some type of mantle... I feel like, you know, I, I can do that, mm-hmm. you know I mean? or we can do that, whatever, you get me? But when it comes down to be like, yo, give me a hug, give me this, I don't want I don't want you to hug me, mm-hmm. I don't want you to do none of that stuff. So to me, that's weird, you get me? And I feel like that's where it comes from. Like, is, is a, yeah, see is, I did it, exactly, affection. exactly. So then growing up, it's like, well, then I don't know how to give that affection, you get me? So that thing, that's part of it, though. You know, your parents don't ever, at least my parents, they never sat down, spoke to me about a girlfriend, mm-hmm. spoke to me about any anything, you get me? So... Growing up, it's like, yo, I only have one example I can see, you get me? Because in, 
I can pay attention to the movies, but as as a more you grow up, you realize oh, that's just bullshit. Yeah, crap. Like, if you if you pay attention to movies, yeah, you you're gonna be what you call a duck. Yeah. You'll, be, you'll be you'll be a duck in other words. You know what I mean? Which is a no go. Essentially yeah. speaking, you know what I mean? So that that actually plays a big role though, because if that that's basically saying you as a parent or you as somebody who is um I guess an influencer to somebody who's younger, mm-hmm. if you're not careful with how you're moving, then your kid is gonna also get those, yeah. those backlashes, you get me? Because I'm sure, like, in, in your household, it was very different for you, right? Because, I I mean, I don't know, like... I mean, you clearly want to get married. You want to have kids and all of that stuff, kid, right? Kid, Well, you don't know what's going to happen. No, it's always We always have this argument. You don't Son know. Son or twins. You get not It doesn't matter what twins. you want. Have you not lived life long enough to... That God's told you, I don't care what you want, Chris. I want you to know. I want you to had this discussion with you, and the Lord listens to my heart all the time. What does that mean? So that means God gives you what you want. Yeah. So he never does what's best for you. He just gives well, you what no, you no. want. Well, I try to pray what's best for me. Okay. So therefore, if I ask for what's best for me, I get what I want. That makes no sense. You can't ask for what's best for you, then ask. That's like that's like saying, God, please let a get a hundred thousand dollars be best for me. <laughs> that's exactly that's how dumb, it is. That's dumb because a hundred thousand dollars might not be best for you. No, you might blow a hundred thousand dollars in the shoe club, man, man, with cocaine. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows what you might do with a hundred thousand? <laughs> so if I get a hundred k right now, I'm gonna go to circle. I don't know what you're gonna do. I don't know. Do you know what you're gonna do? What are you gonna do with a hundred k right now? I'm gonna go to Disneyland. Exactly. You see, you're doing stupid stuff already. Go to Disneyland. But you're gonna come with? No. I'll be like, yeah, I'll get yeah. your ticket. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but you're right. Uh, I mean, for, right, for example, for me, um, now that you mentioned it, I was literally thinking that, that my, the way I saw my dad show affection to my mom, it's funny because that's exactly how I do it. It's not, I, not like, I don't like saying things. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's whack. I feel like that's empty. So I'll buy you stuff. Because mm-hmm. as I was on like, from like Mother's Day or for Valentine's Day or for her birthday, my dad would buy her a bunch of gifts. Yeah. Like, he'll be like, all right, no, like, she'll buy stuff and be like, this is from Chris, this is from Eddie. It was all for him because we didn't have no money. Yeah. It was all for him. But he would buy a bunch of, like, he would take her to buy dresses so she can be, like, dressed up, take her to do her hair. So, like, so even to this day, I'm always like, I'll buy you coffee, yeah. I'll buy you this, I'll buy you gotcha, that. Gotcha. Because, I, and, and I don't even, literally, as you said it, I was thinking, I'm like, huh. Like, that's how I saw it. I, I didn't see my dad said, I love you. I saw my dad show I love you. Gotcha. So I don't like saying it as much as I like showing it. Yeah. Like I feel like if I say I love you, it doesn't really mean Jack. Because yeah. everybody says I love you. Uh-huh. But it's like, you know, but if I'm there and if I buy you what you need, if I if I want you to get, go above and beyond for you, right? Uh-huh. Like that's me showing that I love you. Gotcha. Because, and I think you're right. It's like, you know, because we don't have these actual conversations. Uh-huh. We're just learning as without context. Exactly. Because, uh, trust me, your, your actions speak louder than words, but you need to have some context. For example, like a, like a man that, that honors a woman, it's visible. Mm-hmm. But you also have to teach the child, you know, honoring doesn't mean pleasing every desire. It doesn't mean this. Right, right. What it means is giving her what she deserves, respecting her, blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah. You know, because if not, you think, oh, honoring a woman is, and women have the same idea too, is like having a sugar daddy, someone who buys you all things. Yeah, That's not yeah, honoring yeah. a woman. Yeah. Well, you, you know, know that, that, that culture applies to men too. Yeah. It's like, you know, uh, honoring yourself or respecting yourself or valuing yourself doesn't mean sleeping with every girl. Yeah. So does it mean not sleeping with a girl? Right, right. And all those things have to be communicated, not just seen. Yeah. No, it, it, it's funny that you say that because that's and, and and you peep like that's that's literally how I see it. That like for uh, so my dad like you coming or not, my dad's always been there financially. You get me? Like mm-hmm. my dad's always been there, like yo, I I come home, you know, like I'm, I'm the food's here. You get me? Mm-hmm. T- type of vibe, you know. So he so he's he's present in that sense. You get me? Where like yo, I, it's it's uh, that kind of support. Mm-hmm. You get me? It's not the emotional kind of support, right? It's like the yo. I'm present in the sense of like, yo, I'm gonna be bringing home, you know, like the money mm-hmm. so that we can pay these bills, and whatnot, right? So now that you said though, it, it's kind of interesting because that's almost how I look at a lot, a lot of things now, like like uh, girls and sugar daddies and mm-hmm. sugar babies and stuff like that. You know what I mean? It's like me for the most part. If I always see like, yo, if you don't have money, you can't get a girl. I always see that. that that's not necessarily the truth. You know what I mean? But that's how you've seen it. But yeah, because it's like, yo, like, and what I always say playing around, I was like, no, I can't have a girlfriend. I'm too broke. You yeah. know what I mean? Because Look, uh, girls always tell me this. It's like, oh, but you, you know, you think that like, yo, like, if you don't have money, no girl's gonna be like, you know, it's like, it, it's, you know, it's at, at the end of the day, like, if you literally don't have money though, as a as a woman, I'm not talking about like um, a girl growing up and you tell as a woman, you want a man to always have money, like to you, provide for you. You already know, like, the, the, the there's things in life that just to me will always remain forever. You know what I mean? And that's. Yo, if the man cannot provide, you're gonna see him as like a a, a burden in the mm-hmm. sense like yo, like what what are we doing here? You, you guys trash. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean, so but that's how I see another. Like I, I don't I don't say I see girls as gold diggers, but I'm like yo, if you have money, 
you can get girls. You get me? That's 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 kind of just the truth of it. I kind of almost see me like mm-hmm. see me black and white. Now, for example, look at at this point in time, right? In your twenties, as a as a guy, I feel like right now, like 24, 25, a woman doesn't expect you to be a baller, right? The girls are gonna tell you like, oh no, you just need to have goals, mm-hmm. though, right? You need to be striving for something. Yeah, you need to, you you need have, to me, have ambition. Right, right. Uh, those are like, oh, you you should have a car, right? Yeah, because right now, what you need to do is you need to be result your dream. Exactly. Eventually, you need to have income to buy. Stuff. Exactly. That's basically what it comes down to. Then by the time you hit that thirty year mark, right, where women are already freaking out, they're like, oh my god, I'm thirty. Like I haven't I haven't done nothing, but I'm like, you know, that, that's usually the freak out point for a lot of people. You get me? And the same thing for men. Yeah, men can hit a real quick midlife crisis in the thirties and they feel like they haven't accomplished nothing. You get me? And by that time, if you're dating by that time, it's almost like yo, you but you gotta have your own place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You definitely you definitely gotta have a nicer car than you would if you're like in your early twenties. You know, it, 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 I always see things like that. Like, it's almost a black and white. Like, yo, th- you need to have these kind of steps in, in place. It's not about, like, I never see it as... But you have to be smart. If you are in your 30s and you don't have a car, just say you are thinking about your carbon footprint. <laughs> okay, that's a good one. <laughs> she might want to know what the fuck that means. She's going to be like, that's he's good. so caring about the about world. The <laughs> well, by the time we're 30, if you're our age, 24, 25, you're 30 and you're talking about carbon footprint, you're probably dead by now. We're, we're not going to make it that far. I mean, I've been hearing stuff about this. You know, but that's another podcast. Okay, I'm going to say, I'm going to save you. That's, that's, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's a nugget. That's a nugget. Right. But you know, like, so I, I, I just I just see, like, you know, when it comes down to a relationship and stuff like that, it's almost like, um, it's like the step by step. Part before you ever get to this emotional thing, because this emotional thing I personally don't understand. Yeah. You know I mean, like that's just me. Like I never reach a point where I can say like, yeah, there's this big emotional connection. I I don't understand it, me personally. So I don't I I can't really speak on that. You know I me, mean? but I I what I can see from the outside is like, yo, if you don't have this going for you though, it's gonna be a wrap. Yeah. You know I mean? Like it's not there's nothing that's gonna really like sustain or last. You know? yeah, it's not a flourish the way. And I love when people hit me with the line like, oh, well, what about like you know the hood niggas, the broke people that just. It's like, yeah, but they girls probably broke too. You know what I mean? So that's probably why they're together. Because realistically, a girl, look, if a girl's making more money than you, usually the a girl's thing will be like, no, you know, because a guy gets emasculated. And part of that might be true. You know? yeah. Like, if you're that guy that, like, you know, cares too much, that's on you. That yeah. Mean, I'll be I don't a stay, see it like that. I'll either. be a stay at home dad happily. I don't, well, I don't know about all that. I can't yeah. do that. You get it? But, nah, I'll mean, like, nah, nah. go to your odd job, but like, Joey, Joey, get out. Nah, get out. That's boring. <laughs> Joey, get out. You can't be a stay at home dad. That's That'd be fun. Well, maybe because you had a baby. Yeah, I'm gonna like, like, have a kid. I'm not gonna like just be home doing nothing. You're gonna yeah. be cooking. You have an apron on. Yo, I, she crazy. I'm gonna learn to cook, bro. She crazy. Then I right? finally opened that coffee shop we're talking about. Yeah, but you're staying home, dad. Yeah, you can go and do coffee at my house, bro. Yeah, but opening a coffee shop. Yeah, That's <laughs> your house. You don't belong in the coffee shop. Yeah, yeah, Come on, bro. Let me do this story. All right, man. So you know, I, I, I get, I get from the looks of it though. You see, like when you don't have those conversations, like mm-hmm. you said about, oh, this is how you should treat a woman. This is how you should value women. Then you have young boys grow up into like not knowing how to value. You know what I mean? Like, so their examples yeah. become the rappers. Yeah, you start seeing somebody. Yeah, I, I, I think that's kind of like the, the big problem mm-hmm. that we have now. I feel like there's like a, a huge amount of up, uproar now. I, I, it's part of the social media. Mm-hmm. I feel like the uproar's always been there, right? About men cheating, whatever, whatever. But I mean, you know, it's even bigger now because of the because of social media. Yeah. But I feel like that's the thing, though. Like a lot of boys, you know, you growing up as boys before you become men. Your examples of how to treat women and stuff like that come from music, mm-hmm. come from movies, because the fathers, the mothers, or whatever, we're not having the conversation. Yeah, yeah, we're, not we're not having the conversation about sex in general, mm-hmm. the entire mm-hmm. scope of it. You get me? So yeah, that's true. Yeah, if you don't communicate, then we're gonna get grab it from somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Mm. No, that's that that's super true. Look, you know, every time that we talk here, it's always about um, you know, just giving our take on mm-hmm. on certain things. You get me? So, I, I, you know, we say this to always say, like, you know, there could be a young boy watching right now, you get me? Or there could be a, a young lady watching right now, you get me? Or maybe you're just older um, in our age or way older than us and you're watching, you get me? But it just gives you a, a point of view for maybe your current mm-hmm. kid or your future kids, you get me? So, you kind of, like, just have an awareness, you get me? Because the way, because it's true, kids, we learn through what you do, mm-hmm. mostly what you do, you get me? But you should have those conversations. Those yeah. conversations will stick. You know what I mean, the yeah. more you have those conversations, the more it'll stick. You mold my the what I saw into a bigger understanding of what it is. Exactly, like you said, with context. Yeah, yeah man. You got anything else to say? I think you said it, bro. I think it was good. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, guys. You know, if you thought we were uh, smart, if you thought we were wise, if you thought we were excellent, 
You thought our vernacular was, uh, give me another big word. <laughs> you got another big I was word having, I was having a moment. All right, if you thought our vernacular was outstanding, if you thought our topic of choice was, uh, one of enlightenment, please leave a like, <laughs> Are you share. Are you SAT words? Is that what you're doing? Yeah, yeah, I am. A little bit, you know. I try to sound smart here and there, you know. Uh, leave a like, comment, share, subscribe, guys. We appreciate you guys for watching. Till next time, this is I'm Dom. Peace.